Welcome back, everyone. Uh, this morning we heard from about the historical context around uh, population health and population health workforce development. We also heard for, uh, from some innovative solutions uh, that are that are taking place. Uh, I'm Jeff Oxendine. I'm the CEO and founder of Health Career Connection, also the Director of Health Workforce and Diversity uh, as part of CHOIR at the UC Berkeley School of Public Health. And I'm going to be a moderator and speaker for this panel, which is Pathways, Competencies, and Education and Training for a Varied, Flexible, and Resilient Population Health Workforce. Thank you so much for joining. I think you'll really be excited about our panel. Oh, sorry. The, uh, I'm having a little, there we go. So the, the session objectives today are to discuss the um, pathways to the population health workforce we need. We know that this is right now more critical than ever that we build a robust, diverse health workforce that reflects the population that can meet the incredible population health needs that we have and address the underlying inequities that are leading to the health disparities and many other challenges that we're facing. So what are the pathways to get the population health workforce that we need? What are the competencies and characteristics that they're gonna need and how can we through education and training effectively prepare people and what changes and solutions are really gonna be needed to attract and retain and empower this workforce to have the impact we need on population health but also to meet their life goals as well. So it's now my uh, privilege to um, introduce our uh, panel, and I'm going to stop sharing just for a moment to be able to, uh, to do that. Uh, first is, uh, it's my privilege, we will have, we'll hear from Dr. J.P. Leiter. He's a senior fellow within the Division of Health Policy and Management at the University of Minnesota School of Public Health. He'll be providing tremendous context on the data that supports who's the population health workforce, um, where are they coming from, uh, what's their progress, what are the needs, really critical in grounding us in what's needed. Uh, Dr. Montrese McNeil Ransom is the director of the National Coordinating Center for Public Health Training at the National Network of Public Health Institutes. Bianca uh, Frogner, uh, Dr. Bianca Frogner is a professor in the Department of Family Medicine at the School of Medicine at the University of Washington and director of the University of Washington um, Center for Health Workforce Studies. And finally, we're gonna hear from two emerging public health leaders um, who are in school studying their graduate work uh, to move into public health. Uh, Tia uh, T. Benali, she's an MPH student at the University of Washington and Joanna Fernandez Nunez is a dual degree public health and social welfare student at UCLA. And with that, I'm gonna to return to my uh, my presentation. Oops, sorry. So I'm going to provide a little bit of a framework to as a um, to frame the, the remarks of this panel. And first of all, it's looking at what is the vision for a, a future health workforce? It helps for us population health workforce. It helps, it's important to have a vision for what's possible. And I'm gonna borrow from some work I did as the co-director of the California Future Health Workforce Commission. And with that commission, we worked for several years to build a blueprint to build the health workforce for, for California. And it, we had leaders that came up with the following framework, that we wanted to build a future health workforce with the right people in the right places, with the right competencies and capabilities to work effectively to promote health and deliver health in all communities. And I think the same is for this panel, it's that's population health workforce we're looking to create. And we're looking to do that, that, in, that leverages the diversity and the equity and, and technology. We're not gonna be able to have enough people in the time frame that we need nor afford it. We have to leverage technology to do that. And then it's gonna take shared ownership, um, a combination of the responsibility of governmental public health, of philanthropy, of uh, private sector, of schools and programs and public health, pipeline programs, government. All of us are gonna have to work together uh, to make this happen for the best, best of everyone. Uh, with our strategy at the Future Health Workforce Commission, we combine three kind of overarching strategies that I apply to this session as well. 
One is to that it's, we have to increase the pathways for opportunities for all people, in this case it was California, but for all people in the country to be able to be in that future population health workforce, because they're out there. We just have to increase the pathways. The second strategy is to make sure that we're aligning the education and training capacity and what's delivered to, pe to pre prepare people with the needed skills and competencies to meet the health needs. And the final is we have to leverage the workforce that we already have, people that are, that are working in the public health workforce as community health workers, as clinicians, to leverage the folks that we do have to better build their capacity uh, to meet the needs of the population. So uh, what are the pathways? These are some overarching pathways. Our panelists will talk in more detail about specific pathways that they're working on. But one place the pathway that groups are coming from is to looking at, at who's in the, currently the COVID workforce. We have, we have hundreds of thousands of people that are, that are about COVID mitigation, they're contact tracers, they're vaccine ambassadors, they're playing many different roles. How can we keep them in the public health workforce? Many were not in the public health workforce before. How do we channel them to keep their interest in going into public health? We also have expanded programs in, for the, the public health um, programs through CDC and, and new fellows programs and the, the AmeriCorps public health. So how do we get that we can get those people channeled into public health? We've got lots of people going through promising pipeline programs all over the country at all levels. We've got armies of undergraduate students now who are interested in, in public health. They're majoring in public, public health or they're majoring in things like data science um, that we also really need. We've got graduate students who are um, and graduates of graduate programs in all different disciplines who now public health is on their radar screen. How do we channel them into the types of population health places and meeting the needs that we really have? There's new programs like a community medicine master's program that's a virtual um, program that's, that's being offered by the um, Claremont Graduate Institute in Southern California. That's a new way of getting people in the public health. And then, of course, we have our incumbent public health workers that already have skills and experience. And how do we help them be retained? How do we help them advance and, and skill up as needed? We've got lots of clinicians and people in other sectors who are burnt out right now, perhaps, and might be looking for ways to impact the uh, the population health. And we have community health workers, coaches, folks at that community level that we can really help build up, lift up to make an impact at that level and expand their roles and competencies and their impact and also keep them in other roles in public health should they choose to be able to pursue them. And then digital uh, technology and digital health. And the great thing about this workforce work that we're doing is by doing this work, everybody wins. We get a more robust, diverse workforce that has the employers meet their needs and increased diversity. It's a great opportunity for folks that are coming through these path pathways in life, career, economic opportunities, which we know also leads to health. And then we're going to get better health outcomes. So it's a win-win for doing all this work. The good news is lots of money is being invested um, right now through all the different programs. This was a message just last week from one of my colleagues. Jeff, I just hired close to 30 people with funding from the CDC Foundation you know, from all different backgrounds to support vaccine equity. We've got them in public health now. Here's a great way, a great opportunity to leverage their lived experience and their language and culture. And so it's a great moment of time to be able to move this forward. We've got people going into all different destinations within population health. Um, obviously governmental public health is critical. And also at the same time, being able to get people in new kind of collaborative relationships where we're focusing on whole person care, intersectoral work between public governmental public health and health systems and community-based organizations. And so I think we need to widen our lens about the way we, we where we send people into public health in addition to um, governmental public health and then find ways we're all gonna be able to work together. In terms of competency, so those are some of the pathways on a high level where people may come from to go into public health. In terms of the different competencies, we have well-established competencies in our industries, thanks to the Council on Linkages and, and CEF, and those are always evolving competencies. And we also know that, that included in those, but in addition to those, is building people who, like my colleague, Dr. Rishi Manchanda talks about, are gonna be upstreamist, people who can really work upstream in community and with the trust of the community to be able to really impact the, the factors that, that influence health the most. We have to have people that regardless of their technical training who can be advocates and who can build power because as we're really seeing this is about building power amongst residents, among communities and people in positions of power. 
Obviously, we have to address underlying issues of racism and social inequities and folks that are able to do that along with creating more diverse, inclusive places where people belong. And then we, nuts and bolts, we've got to be able to utilize technology and data uh, more effectively and, and artificial intelligence and many of the kinds of things that are out there. So a lot of competencies uh, in terms of skills that people are going to need now and going forward. In terms of competencies and knowledge, in addition to people's public health uh, technical knowledge, which is ob obviously the foundation for going into population health, um, we also know that people have to really not only know about, but have to be able to put into practice uh, changes around social determinants of health. Given the behavioral health crisis we have, everyone's going to have to understand how to be more knowledgeable about addressing the behavioral health of the population. Obviously, we still have an aging population with a lot of chronic disease. We've got to be able to respond to climate change and, and unfortunately, other types of infectious disease and disaster issues. And we've got an aging population. So we've got to be able to take care of people um, at all at the end of life and keep them healthy, aging in place. Finally, uh, we've got to have people that can take care of them. We have to be able to take care of ourselves. And I think sometimes we overlook helping people with self-care and wellness. So these are some of the emerging competencies. Again, the panelists will go into more detail about this. And the characteristics of the workforce is that we need a, a population a workforce that reflects the rich diversity and lived experience of our population and diversity in many different um, factors, not just race and ethnicity, which we know are critical, but also socioeconomic status, thinking styles, where they're from, politi pol political views, how we think, uh, disability pol uh, abilities. And so all these different types of things. We need people who are place committed, people who want to work with certain populations and are going to, at the same time, given our new reality, be able to work effectively remotely. And what I'm hearing all the time from organizations is we need people to be flexible, adaptable, and resilient to deal with the changing times that we have. And obviously, we've got to be able to bridge some of these big divides we have. So people who can work across difference. And then got to be able to have agency in people. The California Endowment in their Building Healthy Community Initiative uh, set, came up with agency uh, plus belonging equals change. So we need a workforce that not only feels that themselves, but can help promote that in others. So those are some of the competencies and characteristics that we need. Um, you know, I came, my part of my background was being the Associate Dean of Public Health Practice at Berkeley School of Public Health for uh, 12 years uh, and a faculty member there. And one of our, our key mantras was pre academic preparation plus practice, you know, experience and preparation equals a public health professional. I think that's going to be more needed than ever in terms of how we prepare people to, to make an impact. I think we've got a great opportunity. We've got a perfect storm now where, unfortunately it is a crisis, but where crisis is, there is opportunity. You know, we've got a workforce that is really fatigued and burnt out and under siege from lots of different areas. We're dealing with the great resignation and an aging workforce anyway. Um, we know within governmental public health, there's hiring processes, challenges and delays and their level of pay and opportunities for advancement make it really challenging. That's really hard right now because the competition for talent is great. The other industries, the other health sectors and industries have, they now get, it's important to, that workforce is a key, key competitive issue and that diversity, equity, inclusion are as well. And I've got large companies from all over who are coming forward saying it's time to, um, you know, how can we get some of those graduates that you're channeling into public health that now are, uh, they're going into other sectors. So public health has to step up. Right now, we need to have the enumeration of the workforce, which I know is uh, Dr. Leiter is going to talk about in just a minute. So I'm going to end by just saying there are some perfect storm challenges here as well, that we have a, an awareness of greater awareness of public health uh, and a burning platform that people perceive there is a need to address workforce as well as racial justice and, and imperatives. Um, there's a lot of investment going on and, and, in, and, and growing programs, and we've got capable leadership to do the role. So um, I'll just leave you with saying that we have tens of thousands of people that are out there. They have the passion, they have the skills, they have what's needed. We just have to connect them. We have to find the connection and the guidance to get them into the population health roles and the sectors and the communities where there's the most need. And we wanna be able to come up with a more inclusive, affordable um, education so that people can access. And then they've gotta be able to access these opportunities that we have and be able to, to do well by doing good. 
um, by working in, in population health. 